to cue that. In today's video, we're going to be using the Leyden jar. And we're going to be having a look at how the number of times we charge it affects the distance that we can have the discharge occur at. Now, when I was filming this, some of the shocks couldn't really be caught very well by the camera. So I'll show you one or two of them anyway. We've got some really good ones, but I'll show you some of the poor ones that you can still see the blue light in the background. We'll measure those distances and see what happens. As before, we've got to be a bit careful because these are quite large shocks that can really hurt. So be very careful once you've charged it up and as you're charging it, not to touch the nail at the top. Right, let's get started. So let's have a look at the data that we've collected. Well, I've just put in a simple table here and I was measuring to about a half millimetre because I could pause the frame and measure the distance that the nails were apart using that ruler on the back when the spark happened. So we can see it was really quite small with just 50 charges and it went up to almost a centimetre with 250 charges. So, let's see what happens if we plot that as a graph. Well, there's a couple of very simple things we can pick out. One of them is that this is a linear relationship. That means it follows a straight line. And what that tells us is that the discharging distance is proportional to the number of charges. It's related to the number of charges. And the other key thing we can pick out from this data is that as we increase our number of charges, we can see here as the number of charges increases, so does the discharge distance. Now we could explore a lot more about this data and actually pull out a nice equation relating the voltage to the distance that the discharge will occur in air. But we won't do that right now because that's quite in depth. So why does this discharge occur? Well, we need to have a little look at our bottle setup. So as we charge it up, we get a negative charge on the nail in the bottle and a positive charge on the nail connected to the foil on the outside of the bottle. Now, as that nail moves closer, with the positive charge, both of these static charges generate fields around the nail. And these fields, they're a little bit like magnetic fields, and they interact with each other. And as they get closer and closer, these field lines get closer and closer until they superheat the air, or they cause the air to ionize. And when the air ionizes, it becomes conductive. So this can happen. It sparks across the electricity, transports through that ionized air, and we lose our charges. There's no more charge, charge separation anymore, because those electrons whizzed across to the positive side. And so now we have a neutral system that just had that spark. And of course, once it's done, the spark's gone. And we'd have to recharge the system. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it was informative. Next week, we're going to be having a look at how ions can be used to increase that distance. If you missed any of the previous videos, I'll put them up here. And we'll see you next time.